hello everypony and welcome back to the Pony Talk Podcast. It is great to have you all returning back to this episode or this edition of Pony Talk. Uh, as always, I am your awesome host, Dashy101, and today guys, as promised, I am joined along with Chris. Say hello to everypony. What's up everybody? Yeah, alright. So Chris is on the podcast and uh, guys, we are catching up. We are catching up to uh, be caught up with the episodes on time. Uh, so I definitely think we're going to make it uh, for the finale right on schedule. So yes, as long as we keep it up, what I think we can do with this. So yes, I'm getting excited and it's excited indeed because uh, th this was an interesting episode that we're going to be discussing, which is episode 21. Uh, daring doubt. So, yes. <laughs> Any uh, anything you want to say first, Chris, before we start reviewing and talking about what happened in the episode, or just want to get right into it? Let's just get into it. All right. I like your style. Okay. So, this uh, this again, this episode was quite interesting. It was likable. It was fun. Uh, so, yes, but the episode, let's try to get right into it. So we begin with Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, where um, Fluttershy sees Rainbow Dash and says, Hey Rainbow, I have read all the Daring Do books up to her most recent one, which is, uh, we find out, titled Daring Do and the Fallen Idol. And Rainbow Dash is like, wait, what? That, that's not one of her books. Where are you getting that? She says, uh, yeah, it is one of her books. It's here right on the cover. I have it right here. And Rainbow Dash takes a look at it and uh, finds out that this is not a Daring Do book, but made by an imposter. Uh, the imposter we find out being Groom QQ Martingale. That is uh, the author's name, but uh, we go in a little bit of investigation, and uh, Rainbow Dash finds out that it is Dr. Cavalaron, uh, one of the mean villains with Daring Do. Uh, very, it plays a very important part in those books. Uh, so, this changes everything. Uh, definitely changes everything. So, with uh, Rainbow Dash finding out Dr. Cavalaron has ridden this uh, monstrosity, uh, there's a lot of things that are exposed about uh, Daring Do or AKA Yearling. Uh, uh, th this is not good. So the biggest thing that is exposed in that book is her identity. Uh, AK Yearling is real. She is the real Daring Do, uh, which no pony should know besides the main six because they've tagged along with some of her adventures and they're the only ones that know that uh, she is the real Daring Do. Um, which Rainbow Dash goes to see her, which her she's holding a little signing uh, signature um, little venue right across the street from where Dr. Cavalera is signing his um, falsehood of a book of Daring Do. Um, which Rainbow Dash is like, why are... Th what, what's going on, Yearling? Like, have, have you got any pony who has said anything? Uh, who has done it? She's like, you have no idea. It's just been going on and on. It's just been getting worse. And uh, she's like, well, it seems like you got a lot of people. She says, the thing is, though, they aren't here to sign a book of mine. They're here to get answers. And, uh, the, yeah, so with them being all dressed up and all that as Daring Do, a lot of them are upset because, you know, why hasn't Daring Do kind of put this? Or AKA Yearling uh, put this in her book? So, this is, a lot of fans are confused by this. And so, uh, Rainbow Dash kind of gets fed up 
about this and says, okay, we, we need to uh, go stop Dr. Caballeron. Uh, which Fluttershy kind of insists by saying, well, I mean, he's just saying stuff. He's not doing anything wrong. The Rainbow Dash is like, please, I don't need to hear it. And she goes, finds Dr. Cavalier on, on his alone time, uh, away from his signatures, because every pony is uh, going crazy about this book. Um, and so this is where we get into Rainbow Dash and um, Dr. Cavalier on talking and how um, Dr. Cavalier on's perspective of uh, Daring Do and why he has written this book. Reason why? Um, her adventures and all that. She literally explains in the book that she's done certain stuff, which uh, one of them was pointed out to be uh, she does a lot of uh, spider abuse, uh, crashing through webs and, webs and all that, which obviously that ticks off Fluttershy a little bit. And she says, well, yeah, that's kind of ouch and stuff. And uh, she destroys a lot of uh, historical and ancient structures in her adventures, as that is through the book. And remember, she's like, well, the reason why is because she's trying to save those precious artifacts from you guys doing stupid stuff. And he's like, well, I can see why you think that, because she writes those books that way. So you kind of have to side with her but you know whatever your side is on I'm not judging you or anything like that but if you want the real truth I am telling you the real truth about Daring Do. So uh, Fluttershy is kind of now siding with uh, this villain who we've known or somewhat known for quite some while now and uh, Rainbow Dash is not too happy that he's trying to destroy um, Yearling's career with writing these books. Because she loves, loves creating uh, new publishings for her audience and all that. You know, could you, could you imagine just having uh, a successful novel that you write and then someone just exposing a lot of crap about you? I mean... <laughs> Yeah, don't don't get me wrong though, uh, but like, there's a lot of that going on these days. You guys probably already know this. Uh, there there's a lot of stuff that is either uh, very successful people, and uh, there has to be one or many different people trashing on that person, saying, "Oh, let me show you the dark secrets of that person and stuff," and uh, it, it it just. I don't know. Pe people have to sometimes be a little too extra sometimes, and uh, never, never understood. But they're they're mostly only trying to get attention, uh, which this is what Dr. Cavalleron's, I guess, somewhat doing in Rainbow Dash's uh, perspective. Um, so now that this is uh, all put together. Um, the, he put this book together to show uh, that he is in some way, shape, or form capturing these uh, ancient relics from these uh, ancient places that Daring Do destroys, but Daring Do always gets a step ahead of him. So he wants to be known as some sort of hero in uh, these ponies' eyes. Uh, not as some villain as Daring Do marks them as, or, and his henchmen. So, uh, while uh, this is being talked about, uh, Fluttershy goes back to talk with uh, Groom QQ uh, Martingale and says, Well, hey, you know, your book does make a lot of sense and all that, and uh, I, I really like it. Can you, can you sign it for me? He's like, Yes, of course. And uh, Fluttershy does a lot of, well, kindness things, aka her elements. We all know that. Um, and Dr. Cavalera kind of starts realizing this and says, Oh, Fluttershy, if you were just uh, like my other uh, hench ponies and stuff, we could do so much, accomplish more. 
you know, and she's like, well, you know what? I, I could fill up a position if you want. And Dr. Valera is like, really? And then he, like, makes it even more dramatic, saying, oh, no, 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 it's too dangerous for you, too dangerous for a nice pony like you. And uh, she says, no, I assist. I love going out on crazy adventures and stuff, especially seeing uh, the woodland creatures and stuff. And so uh, he's like, okay, well, if you insist. So Fluttershy ends up joining... Uh, Camelaron in his journey which later on Rainbow Dash finds out about that and she's definitely not too happy about that she is very very upset uh, and once this is brought to her and Fluttershy says well you know maybe this will give us a chance to see his perspective over another because in there's got to be something you got to agree with him we're only seeing one perspective of the story. We're only seeing Daring Do's side. We're not seeing uh, Dr. Caballeron and the henchman's side. Uh, so, yeah, this could be interesting. And uh, Fluttershy wants to take every precaution she can and uh, make sacrifices to see uh, Dr. Caballeron's side of the story, if he's really telling the truth or if he's just a fraud, uh, which, again we find out being that is not really too much the case. Uh, it's actually very interesting that we find out in this next part. Uh, so, with going along uh, the quest and all that, um, going through different things, uh, we have one where uh, the hench ponies are trying to get to a certain temple to collect an ancient relic. Um, which is this truth-telling, um, truth-telling necklace charm thing. And, uh, he wants to bring it back and put it somewhere safe where it won't, you know, be destroyed or anything like that or be in the wrong hands, as he says. And so they run into a few problems, one of them being, uh, the wild creatures that are outside, um, and... Dr. Caroline says, Fluttershy, what are you doing? Don't stand out here. Oh, that poor pony's going, not going to exist anymore. And then, of course, Fluttershy stopping them and interacts with them and stuff. And Dr. Caroline's definitely seeing more of Fluttershy. He's seeing that uh, she's very capable with her kindness. Uh, she can uh, treat the other ponies with feeling like they're something more instead of them well being like all self minded saying hey you can't do this you can't do that you idiot why did you uh, do this and so uh, Fluttershy is definitely help helping them a lot get through this and Dr. Kara Beleron then uh, says that uh, he actually needs Fluttershy uh, to go into this temple because it can only be uh, retrieved by a Pegasus pony which Fluttershy is um, and in that point, uh, Rainbow Dash cannot find Fluttershy and the rest, so Daring Do and Rainbow Dash go set out to find Dr. Caballeron and the rest. And, uh, in their tracks they get stopped by, uh, the wonderful Alhi Zolo. Uh, yes, that, another, uh, villain that is also played in a lot of Daring Do books. Um... So, while they are trying to escape into the temple, Alizolo, uh, puts a, like, sort of vine trap around them, I guess you want to say, and, uh, he says that, like, you're not going to get into the temple or anything, uh, Daring Do sets herself free and then ends up setting, uh, Rainbow Dash free and, uh, gets away, and he's like, you will not get away with this! The, the 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 clip for most villains uh, saying that you will not get away with it until in the end they end up do they end up doing so uh, Dr. Cavalleron and the rest of the gang are in the uh, in the temple and uh, they make it into the chamber where the necklace the truth telling necklace is being stored um, so he says, okay, Fluttershy, this is your time to fly up there uh, 
there just be careful there are booby tracks booby traps and all that so uh yes flesh has like oh that's easy and uh well eh, a little more easier said than done uh sets off some of the traps uh and she ends up retrieving the necklace and all that uh but the traps are set uh lava and everything and then these um totem like little things uh they're called a temple or not temple s stone gargles uh these things uh start coming to life they're statues at first and then uh, once the necklace was taken, uh, they come alive to try to retrieve it or, well, destroy the others who uh, intrude into the ancient temple. Uh, so this is not good. Uh, they're, they're trying to get out of there and uh, eventually Rainbow Dash and Daring Do end up catching up with uh, Dr. Caballero and Fluttershy and the rest and uh th this uh brings them to question and they're trying to get out of this temple uh but uh while they do and try um this ends up uh not really going out too well because they have to figure out a way to get these stone gargoyles to go back to their um original form which uh, one of the ponies finds out that they do not like light. So if light is shining in them, uh, they will go back to their original form. So they reflect a light off uh, object that will shine uh, in dark places and ends up bringing them back to stone. Uh, so yes. But then, Elizolo returns back into the temple to stop every pony uh, from stealing the necklace and uh so while this is being uh all throughout crazy mayhem they they figured out one problem now they got another uh in their hooves so uh they're um this is where questions are being brought up uh i think rainbow dash asked why uh, Dr. Caballeron came here to uh, take the necklace and uh, says, is it true t for you to steal it or something? He says, well, that's a part of the plan. But what I realized is I got Fluttershy here and, you know, maybe not just taking this for myself, but somewhere to where it can be stored and not in endangerment. endangerment. And uh, so... Uh, this necklace is kind of used throughout to uh, get each pony's perspective, Daring Do's perspective, um, Dr. Cavalleron, and a few of the henchmen too, um, which they got interesting stories. Uh, I forgot what uh, one said, uh, something that was a little too much that was said. He's like, okay, I don't like this thing. <laughs> uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but while... They are running around and they make it into a part where uh, the temple cuts off and there's a dead end. Um, they're like, oh, this isn't good. We're never going to get out of here. And then Fluttershy says, wait, did any of you ponies get to stop and think what Ali Zolo's part of the story is? I mean, we heard Dr. Caballero and Daring Do's part, but we haven't really heard what um, Ali Zolo's part was. And so Fluttershy goes out there. They all say, you're going to get killed. What are you doing? Don't do that. And she goes and insists they do it. It does it. Uh, goes out there. Uh, finds Ali Zolo. And Ali Zolo is like, ah, at last. You have brought me my necklace. And he's like, give me that. And she says, well, I, I actually came out here to ask you a question. Why are you trying to hurt us or why are you trying to you know take this ancient relics and all that and um she says put this on and he puts it on and uh he basically says that he is a protect uh he's supposed to protect uh the ancient temples throughout and the ancient relics um with uh uh truth talesman 
uh, but the truth tells men every time that uh, a temple is destroyed or anything by that with Daring Do, um, or even the henchmen of uh, Dr. Caballeron, or Dr. Caballeron himself, uh, that ends up looking bad for uh, his, I guess, boss in a way. So that's why he's been so vicious and mean to these ponies because they keep destroying what he's trying to protect and preserve for others. And so, uh, with that being said, every pony now understands each other and they're like, ooh, so all this time you gotta be telling me that I was taken ancient relics from something that I shouldn't have but just left here because you protect this stuff. And he's like, well, it's nice to know that finally someone understands and everyone agrees that yes, it's nice that we got the whole entire story instead of bits and parts of the story. Um, so with this being said in a case, uh, everyone uh, kind of takes back everything that they said. They kind of apologize in a way and um, this is where uh, we have every pony basically uh, like, okay, understandment, all right, well, you know what? We can return back to our normal life, our normal ways, and uh, we can uh, continue on with whatever we want to do. So, um, in that case, uh, Ali Zolo ends up being. Uh, I think they go. I, I think they're in Manhattan. I, I don't know. Because uh, in the beginning of the episode and the end of the episode, I want to say they're in Manhattan. I don't know. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, they, I think they're definitely in Manhattan. Yeah, I think they are too. Because it doesn't really look like Canterlot or anything like that. So, or Lost Pegasus or anything. I'm pretty sure Manhattan is the one. Uh, that lets ponies or authors of really important books, Daring Do, uh, and uh, any other best-selling books out there in Equestria. Pretty sure they're in Manhattan, but uh, Alizo becomes a tell-all author um, of his own. So, yes. And uh, we have both uh, A.K. Yearling and... Um, yeah, for, I forgot it's DD something oh no groom QQ uh, Manningale um, by each other and this is where uh, Ramadesh Dash is like so um, now that everything's over and stuff like that uh, you all you all made up you all agreed that you wouldn't take any of the artifacts because you knew they were in good hands with Ali Zolo and uh, they're like, well, you know, I hate to admit it, but we really should have took a look at everyone's perspective and uh, went along with it. Um, so uh, Daring Do says that she's going to try writing um, other books, and uh, so is Dr. Caballeron. Uh, they're going to try doing something else that makes more logical sense and uh, without doing something uh, else. So uh, all the, uh, the authors uh, agreed to become a part of something else. They're going to be writing their own books. Um, and in a sense, they're writing for um, an upstage version uh, part of a Daring Do project. So... Uh, Yes, and I guess in this case, guys, um, yeah, you could say that all these guys are now reformed, Dr. Caballeron and uh, Ali Zol. We, we know why they were doing what they were doing, and uh, this has put it at ease, and actually a good way of putting it at ease. It's kind of a little disappointing because I actually, like, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of things that are reformed and all that, but I, I gotta say this was actually a nice one. Um, but also kind of weird. I, I still don't know how to feel about it to this day. Um, but that's an episode. That that was the episode, guys. Daring Doubt. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
again, like I said, it, it's very weird seeing uh, two two villains that were supposedly uh, given with the Daring Do franchise now coming out as being truthful with a little help of the ancient relic um, and Fluttershy with her kindness. Um, exposing what is really going on and why things have been the way and now seeing that these guys are now working side by side uh, in the near future which unfortunately we aren't going to see any more of that because the season's almost over um, it, it was nice is nice uh, and I got a few laughs out of this episode uh, but what about you Chris what about you what did you think it was pretty good it was fun Okay. Um, so, what did you think about the whole uh, Dr. Caballeron getting his part of the story and uh, uh, Ali Zolo, too? Very quite, 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 quite uh, surprising. Yeah. Um, I, I gotta say, you know, Dr. Caballeron, I, I kind of expected maybe some sort of thing, but Ali Zolo, I always thought, was a real, real bad guy. Uh, but for him to actually join the authors at the end, I was not expecting that. Um, I kind of yeah. found that funny, reading to uh, the ponies of uh, the book that they're trying yeah, to read. Yeah, even though isn't everyone like shocked that he's actually a villain? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, that, I still can't get over it, like I said, guys. It, it's very weird seeing uh, a villain to villain and... Um, then finding out they weren't villains after all they were just trying to protect relics um which i mean in a sense daring do was trying to do that too but then it, when she thought about it she was like yeah i kind of destroyed a lot of ancient relics and temples and stuff yeah i'm going to stop doing that now um and now she's got uh more authors working aside her so uh yeah it's really nice it was a really good set off for uh the Daring Do franchise of episodes, but, um, yeah, I, I, I thought this episode was very likable and fun, as, uh, Chris has mentioned. So, uh, any closing thoughts, my dude? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, <laughs> guys, uh, all I can say is if you guys have any questions or comments to leave down below uh saying what you thought of this episode we would love to hear it um there is going to be a few more podcasts coming your way so make sure you stay tuned and we're going to be caught up real soon here i'm very excited and uh i can't wait to uh do our next podcast which uh chris is going to try joining us again for that episode uh, which will be episode 22, Growing Up is Hard to Do. Uh, yes, I, I am very excited. I've seen a lot of things. I haven't personally watched it, uh, but Chris has. Um, but we will be doing that podcast up next, so make sure you stay tuned and uh, click that notification bell, guys, because that, that will help you stay tuned for... Uh, the podcasts that will be coming your way. Uh, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching this episode, and uh, we will see you in the next Pony Talk podcast, guys, when we come back for episode 22. Peace out, everypony. Bye!